complex emotion that has been felt, experienced, and defined since birth. It is believed to be a transcending feeling to most, but to others, just a simple chemical reaction that makes us act on our own primal instincts. Though it is understood in a multitude of ways, love always has a bittersweet cost. Compromise, sacrifice, loyalty, all of which we have gone to great lengths in the pursuit of love. But one man had his humanity stripped, life crippled, and mortality forever changed for the one he loved most. This would be the first story and origin of the vampire. Though this nocturnal creature has been portrayed in many ways through popular media, it has been a vicious killer, an addicted blood-sucking monster, and even a romantic fantasy. But its origin and creation is based on sacrifice for true love. Our story begins thousands of years ago, in the time of ancient Greece, an Italian adventurer named Ambrosio has made his way to Greece in the city of Delphi. He had dreamed of meeting the oracle in the temple of Apollo so that he may have his fortune told. It was the home of the Pythia, better understood as the home of oracles. They would often pray in the chamber of Apollo. This would be where they received their prophecies. Ambrosio made his way into the temple and approached the Pythia. However, the fortune teller quickly turned to him and spoke with Grim. She would repeat a cryptic chant to him with the only words she would say. The curse, the moon, the blood will run. The words would haunt him from that moment on. He would ponder the meaning of his fortune all day and all night. The sun would rise the next morning with Ambrosio tired from his sleepless night. Staying the night at the temple, he would bring himself together to go back into town. The market was crowded, but Ambrosio needed supplies for his journey to Italy. Looking down into his pack, as he continued to make his way through the crowd, he runs into a woman. They quickly stumble around to pick themselves up and make sure that each one was okay. The woman was beautiful, with long, curly black hair, soft, pale skin, and eyes that were blessed with amber. With a lack of sleep and dealings with superstition, Ambrosio believed she was a goddess from Olympus. The townsfolk would walk around the two like stones in a river, and Brogio was mesmerized by her. However, it seemed the feeling was mutual, as they were both hypnotized by one another. The rest of the day, the two would accompany one another. The young woman's name was Celine, and she's the twin sister to the Pythia of Delphi. She was a maiden of the temple, tasked to assist the oracle, with their duties and maintaining the temple itself. Ambrosio and Celine would spend a great deal of time with one another. The young Italian adventurer would wait every morning before dawn to meet with Celine, and before the sun's last light would disappear over the horizon, she would rush to meet him in town. A few weeks would pass, and it would come time for Ambrosio to return to Italy. However, the mere thought of him leaving Celine was unbearable. But on the last day he was in Greece, he asked Celine for her hand in marriage. She said yes, and embraced Ambrosio with a tender, passionate kiss. It seemed Ambrosio would alter the fate foretold to him by the Pythia, and made preparations for him and Celine to return to Italy. Perhaps he was celebrating too early, as someone had been watching the lovers' interactions. Apollo, the god of the sun, had taken a liking to Selene and was jealous with rage that Ambrosio would dare take something he believed belonged to him. That very night, Ambrosio
Ambrosio went to the temple to accompany Celine one more time before they would leave together that morning. However, in a flash, a tornado of flames descending from the heavens had clashed violently on the white marble steps of the temple. Ambrosio, thrashed by the concussive wave of energy and heat, was trembling before the supernatural force of nature. Apollo, wrapped in a robe of flames and shimmered with gold, stood before the mere mortal. Ambrosio, you sought to take one of my maidens and claim her as your wife, he said with such volume and presence. This is an offense to me and the gods of Olympus. For this, I curse you. So if my light is to ever shine upon thee, you will be scorched and be reduced to ash. He would smile, then disappear in an explosion of bright flames, leaving behind charred marble and a now concussed ambrosio, as the shockwave had sent him flying down the steps. Many hours later, and he begins to regain consciousness, blood dripping down his head. His arms burned by the explosion and cuts from his violent fall. But it was already morning and the sun began to pierce through the valley. Ambrosio was running out of time. He stumbled and was fumbling to the ground every time he tried to pick himself back up. But at the corner of his eye, he sees a cave. Now rushing as fast as he can to the entrance of the cave, the sun's rays would quickly catch up to him. The sun's light washed over Ambrosio, and the sounds of the valley would be muted by screams. His skin began to sizzle, then burn, as if it was being roasted over a flame. Every inch of his body seared with pain as his blood begins to boil within him. Luckily, he makes his way into the cave, but is critically wounded from the burns. He would faint to his injuries. The sounds of water being pushed aside echoed. Ambrosio awakens on a small boat. Unable to properly move due to his previous injuries, he would see who was rowing the boat. Horror consumed him as he witnessed a skeletal figure moving the paddle on each side of the boat. It noticed him and spoke softly. My lord will speak with you shortly. They both arrived at the gates of the underworld. Three heads would appear as the devil hound Cerberus remained on guard. It took notice of the two and then opens the gate for them. The haunting sounds of the underworld as souls poured down into the earth's core. But Ambrosio was taken to a special temple and brought to the throne room of Hades. The Dark Lord was sitting on his throne of bones, waiting for him. He stands up to greet Ambrosio. Welcome, welcome, my dear Ambrosio. You were destined to be at my doors much later, but it seems another one of Zeus's children has meddled with mortals. I have an offer. I will release you back to the land of the living, but you must retrieve a special item. You will bring me the silver bow of Artemis, but... You will need to gain her favor. I will give you a magic bow of my own with eleven enchanted arrows. But should you return without the bow, I will claim your soul for eternity, never to see your precious Celine again. Ambrosio would ponder for a moment, but Celine would be his only thoughts. Her soft aura whenever she is near him, a smile that could warm the coldest glaciers, and the true love that they both passionately shared for one another. Ambrosio agreed. He would be transported back to the cave's entrance. Ambrosio's wounds were healed, 
With both his hands, he was holding the bow and the quiver of eleven arrows. The moon has soon replaced the sun. Now it was safe to step outside. Ambrosio was cautious and moved through the night silently. He would return to the temple to collect his belongings that had been scattered across the steps of the temple. Though he was running out of time, he quickly grabbed. Though he was running out of time, he quickly grabbed some parchment of paper from his bag and made his way to a pond nearby. A ballet of swans were sleeping by the pond. Ambrosio rushed the resting birds and managed to grab one. Snapping its neck quickly, killing the beautiful bird painlessly, he proceeds to cut one large incision into the bird. He would pick a feather off and dip it in the swan's blood. With his quill and blood as ink, he writes to Celine, explaining everything. Morning would soon come. And Celine would make her way to the temple. She was pale and filled with dread, as she believed Ambrosio was killed by Apollo. But as she made her way to the entrance of the temple, she notices a man wearing a cloak. It was Ambrosio. In tears, she would rush in his arms, embrace him one another. However, Ambrosio did not have enough time to stay. He gives her the letter and tells her that he will fix this. Then he quickly makes his way through the shadows. Trusting in him, Celine would kiss him as he left and hold the letter to her heart. Celine read the letter and was devastated, but she knew she needed to continue her duties, thus avoiding suspicion from Apollo. Every morning, a letter would be at the temple's entrance for Celine, love poems from Ambrosio to ensure her that he was okay. Forty-four days would pass, and Ambrosio continued to write to Celine. The blood of the swan was drained, and now used as an offering to Artemis, as a tribute. But the forty-fifth night, he used his last arrow. And missed a swan. He could not write to Celine, nor could he offer a tribute to gain Artemis's favor. Ambrosio collapsed to his knees and wept, as he would lose his love forever. As all hopes seemed lost, a miracle happened. Artemis, the goddess of hunting and the moon, had appeared in front of Ambrosio. Seeing his commitment in his offerings and his skill as a hunter, she took pity on him. Ambrosio, on his knees, begged the glimmering goddess for her bow, so that he may kill the swan in order to write a note to Celine. She agrees and bestows her silver bow to the Italian adventurer. Ambrosio finally had the bow. With it. He rushes back to the cave to return to Hades. Sprinting as fast as he can towards the cave, he would immediately be stopped by Artemis. The goddess speed surpassed any living creature to roam the earth. She slapped Ambrosio to the ground and then cursed him. Should silver ever touch Ambrosio's skin, it shall burn him on contact. He would rush to pick up the bow, but as soon as he grabs a hold of the bow. He immediately drops it. His hand severely burnt. He screams in pain. Tears dripping down from his cheeks, as all of his efforts were in vain. Artemis was surprised and curious towards Ambrosio. Why would this mere mortal dare take advantage of a god? She took pity on him again and demanded he explain himself. Ambrosio would tell her of Apollo's curse and the deal he made, all in an attempt to be with Selene. Moved by his devotion and love for Selene, Artemis would then decide to help Ambrosio. 
she offered to make him the greatest of hunters, almost as great as herself. He would have the speed, strength, and senses of a god, but she also would give him something special. He would be given fangs to drain blood so that he may continue to write his letters. In exchange for his immortality, he would have to agree to her terms. Ambrosio and Selene must escape Apollo's temple, then only worship her forever. However, Artemis was a virgin goddess, and so were her followers, meaning Ambrosio could never touch, never kiss, or have children with Selene. With these terms and conditions, he agreed. Immediately he chases after the swan that had previously evaded him, shocked by his newly obtained abilities. In a blink of an eye, he had caught it, revealing his razor sharp white fangs. He clamped down on the bird, his chin soaked with blood and his fangs stained crimson. The swan was killed instantaneously by his powerful jaws. Using the drained blood, he writes one more letter to Selene. The next morning, Selene would find a note from Ambrosio. He had explained to her that she would need to escape to the docks to meet with him. Before Apollo could take notice, Selene had made her way to the docks, where she would find Ambrosio's ship. There was a note on a coffin written for her. It was from Ambrosio. It had said that she need to order the captain to set sail and only open the coffin after the sun had set. Finally, the couple were free and sailed to Ephesus, where they would live in a cave by the temple of Artemis. In the day, they spend their time in the cave, and every night they would worship in Artemis' temple. They would live happily together for many years, with Ambrosio honoring Selene's chastity. Never to touch, never to kiss, never to marry, and never to embrace in conception for children. After a number of years, Ambrosio remained youthful due to his immortality. However, Selene would continue to age naturally. She eventually would become ill and be on her deathbed. Ambrosio would mourn as he knew he could never join her in the afterlife, as his soul still remained with Hades. Ambrosio would go out one night and find a small pond. There in the pond was a large white swan. He had killed it and offered one more time to the goddess Artemis, begging her to make Selene immortal. Artemis would appear before him. In gratitude towards Ambrosio and Selene's years of devotion to her, she would make one last deal. Ambrosio would be allowed to touch Selene once, as he would have to drink her blood. In doing so, it would kill her mortal body, but her blood mixed with his could create eternal life for any who would drink from it. If he agrees, then Artemis would ensure that the lovers would stay together forever. Ambrosio wanted to refuse. He could never hurt Selene, let alone kill her. But he hears from behind him that someone was walking towards the two. Stepping into the moonlight, it was Selene. She begged Ambrosio as she had followed him and heard the entire conversation. Still hesitant about this deal, but Selene was barely on her feet. Seeing her in pain and aching at her suffering, he finally agrees. She walks up to him by the pond with Artemis aiding her. Selene stands before Ambrosio smiling at him one last time. 
He smiles at her as tears run down his cheeks. He then places his right hand on her soft, pale cheek. She exhales shockingly, but she is filled with love and happiness. This feeling of warm embrace was almost forgotten as tears of joy began to trickle down her cheeks. He then pulls her close to him and reveals his fangs. Quickly he pierced her skin, trying to make the insertion as painless as possible. With his lips pressed against her warm neck, he begins to drink every last drop of blood in her body. Celine would soon faint from the loss of blood, but Ambrosio would still hold on, holding close to him as they descend to the ground. An hour had passed and Ambrosio had not taken a single break draining, but he had completed the ritual. Ambrosio had unclamped his fangs from her neck and set her cold, lifeless body on the ground. He began to shake as he was disgusted at what he had done, but he would soon feel a warm, soft touch on his back. He turns around to see Celine floating about the small pond. She radiated in a beautiful ray of moonlight, and her once youthful figure had returned. My dear Celine, my loving goddess, he said softly. Celine places her hand on his face, pulls him towards her, with both saying, I love you, as they kiss under the moonlight. Selene would then become the goddess of the moon. And through Ambrosio's blood would create future vampires. And she would shine a light forever upon her new children and her love. I wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. And that love and sacrifice are very real and we need to show a little more love for the world and for others but i hope you watched this video and enjoyed it and please like share and subscribe